Hey guys, it's Ryan Amato uh, with my son Preston Amato from Amato Painting here in the Lehigh Valley, uh, which is on the border of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Today, we have a lot of things going on today. Uh, this is our weekly show and we, have, um, we do have a special guest today. Uh, we're going to be talking about epoxy floors and how I, I usually can draw the comparison, it sounds crazy, to epoxy floors to kitchen cabinets. And we're going to talk about that and why I, I make that comparison. Um, you just said that right there. Working with general contractors. I want to talk to you guys about that and my horror stories uh, involved working with those those guys and girls. Um, we're going to re be reviewing Benjamin Moore's notable dry erase coating. Um, we're going to be answering all your questions again. We're going to talk about how to get, get a good estimate. And we're going to be talking to our, our guest uh, uh, right after that. So we are back. There we are. Um, today we're going to be talking to Michael Crane. I, I know Michael from uh, being involved in the different trade associations. Um, we're involved with American Painting Contractor Magazine. Um, but if you don't know Michael, I'm going to add his uh, information. There you are right there. Um, if you go to YouTube and search his company, you're going to see the the the, the high end nice way to to paint your kitchen cabinets and um when i talk about how i compare you know epoxy floors nice epoxy floors done properly to to painting kitchen cabinets i think he's going to explain his process um very nice work done the way that that it should be when you want a high-end finish and um let's bring uh michael in right now there you are welcome What's happening? I appreciate you coming on today. I know you're you're busy. You told me you're, you're working on some uh, a project uh, this week, so I had yeah, to grab absolutely. you when I could grab you. Yep, we so, are. Uh, we're doing some. Uh, uh, we pretty much just do uh, cabinets nowadays, but really, uh, yeah, just mostly cabinets. With uh, we do still do interiors um, every once in a while, and uh, you know, with COVID nineteen, we did you know. Do a little bit more interiors but we're back to just cabinets for the most part so and you're coming to us from where where are you located mike uh lake geneva wisconsin nice so um i'm gonna get into it later but i thought it was a great day to talk to you about it so when we talk about epoxy floors up by by us it's not like um you just open up a can of epoxy and and slap it on the floor because invariably if you didn't prepare it correctly or um, you don't know all your products and you don't have the experience if, if something bad happens along the way, which sometimes it does with, with humidity and the different uh, temperatures that you have to deal with. Um, yep. It's very similar to, to the finishes that you do. Um, could you talk to, to everybody about why you shouldn't just jump on Google and search, you know, paint your kitchen cabinets and just select the, the lowest price painter that you find? Well, uh, look, you get what you pay for. Um, uh, so there's a lot of different things that uh, go into painting kitchen cabinets to get longevity out of your finish. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at a, a factory finished door, let's say you buy a new set of cabinets, um, there's a limited warranty on those cabinets. Um, that manufacturer is not going to limit them or they're not going to warranty them for very long because everybody is going to um, use them differently. Um, so that's one thing to consider about refinishing kitchen cabinets or doing it yourself. Um, everybody has different ways of living in things. Some people are more abusive than others. Um, that is one thing. Uh, but just going online, you know, you can go into a Facebook group and I see this all the time and you know, while I'm thankful for the people that are, are putting my name out there in those groups, um, you know, when people get on their neighborhood Facebook groups and they're like, I'm looking for recommendations on somebody to paint my kitchen cabinets. And then you got 50 people that are like, oh, I can paint kitchen cabinets. So, oh, I, you know, I can do that. No problem. Um, 
you know, nine times out of 10, they've never done it before. Or they're like, you know, oh, we can use chalk paint and we don't have to prep. There's no problem. Um, or there's just, just this fantastic product. You know, you don't have to do anything, no sanding needed. Um, and, you know, people are just amazed by the price. They've got a good sales pitch. And then, you know, pretty quickly down the road, things turn ugly. So. And that's where I compare it to epoxy floors again. I know it's two two different types of, of jobs, but you know, yeah. up up here you can go up. I'm sure down by you, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy Get those kit. Yep, buy those kits, and they're 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 nowhere near the same products that that we would use. So, could you talk about some of your go to products for cabinets? So, my go to products for cabinets. Um, so, my go to for years has been. Um, uh, realistically, I keep everything uh, waterborne for the most part, minus the primers. Um, so, um, I've I've been a you know a huge uh, fan of General Finishes in general. Um, it's a very very local company to me. Um, it's been a, a great product uh, for the most part. Um, I've had very very few issues with it, and um, it's it's a fantastic product. Um, I've used uh, Chem Aqua. Uh, we try to keep it in the um, things that meet the KCMA standards of durability. Um, you know, you, you hear that a lot in, in certain circles. And, you know, some people will say, well, you know, our, our product is certified and that's not an actual thing when it comes to cabinets. Um, the KCMA doesn't actually certify finishes, um, but they're the products can be tested by independent laboratories to meet the standards um, set forth by the KCMA for durability of finishes. Well, um, what ha what have you seen? I I'm sure you've seen a lot of, of craziness uh, as far as failures. When I've, I would imagine you've been called in to fix other contractors' work um, with sure, cabinets. Yeah. Um, yeah. What have you seen? Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen, um, dramatic yellowing, um, you know, it's just, it's super heart wrenching for me though, when I get the call, um, and it's happened more times than I can count, um, where, you know, the homeowner's like, Hey, you know, we, we just did this entire process. We followed everything to a T, um, by this well-known niche um paint paint line it was incredibly expensive we followed all their steps we used um you know they spent like a, almost a thousand dollars to redo their you know call it chalk paint and finish um and within nine months it's failing on them um and you know when you put wax on a on a my kitchen cabinet after that it's it's you know odds are you know it's just you're done <laughs> you so, may as well just buy new doors right and we so. tell people all the time you know um if you if you start doing the work yourself and you spent all this money and material already and then it eventually failed you're not only paying for that over again but now you're paying for the extra labor that it, it took you to to come in and and bring them all the way back to the beginning just to start over again. And, well, and then, you know, when there's a contaminant involved, there's like, I can't guarantee that something is going to, to last because, you know, did we get all of that contamination off? There's really never a guarantee, even though, you know, you strip it, you sand it down, but everything, you, know, you really never know. So, um, what, what can people, what can people expect from a, a a, a good kitchen cabinet um, refinish job from you as far as longevity. I know it varies. So it, it really does vary. Um, it, so we, we do provide a five-year warranty. Um, you know, if there's an issue, um, we'll take care of it. Um, that being said, what we've had, so we do one hour free touch-ups per year for those five years. Um, if they're needed for any reason. Now we've had, um, you know, people that have you know, never taken us up on that offer. And we've had, you know, people where, you know, a year goes by and they're like, Hey, Michael, my, you know, my, my son ran his dump truck into my Island. Um, can you come and touch this up for me? Um, you know, 
where and you when you go and you take a look at it it's it's actually just like they dented the wood and there's not much that you can do about that um i mean that's you know a cabinet manufacturer certainly wouldn't warranty that in any respects Mm -hmm. Um, I do really appreciate my clients and the fact that, you know, they take a chance on, you know, hiring us, paying us a very fair amount of money to uh, to come and redo this. So I want to make sure that they're happy and that we take care of them over the long run. Um, So we do uh, we do whatever we can to keep a long term client. So how do how do you um, in your area differentiate yourself from from the other, uh, you know, painters? where, you know, Mrs. Smith can call up and get her kitchen cabinets painted for $750. And, and here comes, you know, a professional painter such as yourself, who I'm sure that price is, you know, a lot more than that, depending on the job. It is quite a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, right. So I do pre-qualify quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I, I do ask for pictures. Um, so with COVID, so... I've actually been doing the pre-qualification beforehand. Um, so there's a link that I shoot out. One, I have my entire process documented on YouTube that people can watch two and a half hours of everything that we do. Nice. It's, it's very long. Um, so we've actually been getting quite a few calls from that. Um, but two, you know, I have it written down in, in a, quite a long blog format that I send to each person that's asking um so that they can see that you know this job is you know 80 80 to 85 percent prep um and i I believe that's what you know separates us from the people that are just going to come in and you know put kills on your cabinets and you know uh, spray them hung up and you know I understand. So there, there's a whole different um, uh, ball game from what your traditional painter would do to your cabinets, from what um, crane painting does for sure. Um, Absolutely. So just differentiating yourself from the other painters. I mean, that's hard. So you have people calling you all the time who want pricing, and um, we've just found that some people just don't appreciate or value what a professional painter can do. It's it's it's. Um, it's hard to, to prove that to some people because they think anybody can paint. You can go out and buy a bucket and some rollers and you're in business. Well, I, I gotta be dead honest, man. That's, that's how I got started. You know, I was like, Hey, I mean, I, I, I mean, anybody can do this. Right. And then I, I found out that I was wrong cause I sucked. <laughs> um, I was real bad when I first started doing this, but, over the years of, you know, going to a lot of classes and really just honed in on the technique and, um, you know, we've definitely niched into the refinishing portion of it to the, to the point of it's like, you know, even having our business name is crane painting is kind of, um, you know, I'm even considering changing that because, uh, you know, our clients are saying, you know, well, do you know anybody that paints walls? And I'm like, I'm, I mean, we can actually paint the walls for you, but we're still getting so many calls of people are like, well, do you paint exteriors? And I'm like, no, we don't. Um, so we may have to actually change the name just to focus things a little bit more. To dial yourself in. Yeah. All right, Mike. Uh, so where, where can we find you? I mean, if you go to YouTube, guys, just, and search for his name, you'll find him. I know you're on TikTok, correct? That's, yeah, that's just you know, goofy, fun stuff that, you know, my oldest son uh, made me download the app, but I just, I think it's hilarious that you can, I mean, great, because I'm a music fan, so it's, it's fun on there, but we're on TikTok, uh, Instagram under Crane Painting LLC, Facebook, the same thing. Um, yeah, YouTube, I think that's everything. So if you, I mean, if you want your kitchen cabinets painted by somebody, uh, very good in his area in Wisconsin. I mean, please give him a call. Uh, I would highly recommend him. And I, Mike, I appreciate you coming on today. We're going to hope to have you kind of, kind of pop in every once in a while when you're, when you're free. Um, you know, if I have to twist your arm, maybe. Uh, thanks. But I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. 
Absolutely. So that, that was Michael Crane. And I want to jump right into um, uh, talking about cabinets and epoxy floors uh, right after this. Cool. Okay. So, you know, thanks, Mike, for coming on. I really appreciate it. I'm going to try to bring on, you know, Mike every couple weeks, every biweekly, whenever he wants to come on, he can pop in. Um, we can talk about some other stuff. I mean, he's, he's kind of on my level where it's not so much business and numbers and we can talk about the real stuff and we can get into some more uh, cool things down the road. And then I have some other people that I think you guys would all appreciate coming on too. So the difference, uh, the comparison between epoxy floors, I thought it was perfect enough. For some reason, I thought of Michael right away is um, we're getting a lot of people who just call us up and say, I have a two, three car garage and I want a price for epoxy floor. And that's that's hard to do. So it, it, it varies so much. We need to I'd like to see the floor. I want to feel the floor, touch the floor. Um, I need to know how hard that concrete is. We need to know what you expect and what you want it to look like. Um, we want to know your budget. There's so many different variables on epoxy floors with pricing. Um, it could go, it could go up, it could go down, um, it could go all over the place. Uh, so I compare it to kitchen cabinets because you should not. Be, if everybody could paint kitchen cabinets, trust me, uh, the pricing would be very low. And you'd have people all over the place painting kitchen cabinets. I've been on a lot of estimates where they have asked us to come back out and finish or redo other people's work because they didn't know the products. Um, there are so many different products for kitchen cabinets that you need to know what you're doing. And it's the same with epoxy floors. Sure, you can go to Home Depot right now. You can go to the local Benjamin Moore store. You can go to Sherwin Williams and pick up some epoxy and throw it on the floor. And if you think that's that all there is to it um you're going to learn come down the road where that floor might not last and you know again the pricing can go from three dollars a square foot up to for some crazy high-end coatings you know 12 13 4 15 dollars a square foot so just saying i have a two-car garage three-car garage and i saw you know evan's epoxy floor and i want that same exact one that's cool we just need a little more information uh, about your floor. We care about your floor now. We did the other floor, we're onto your floor. So the more info that you can you can give us, the, the better it is. And Preston's showing you some some of the floors that we've done. There's a lot of different things. Do you mean do you want these do you want these saw cut lines expansion joints filled? If so, the product used for that is not inexpensive. It we for something to work properly it's going to have a price to it um he's just going through our, our instagram page if you don't know us you know check us out on instagram we we throw everything up good bad ugly it's all up there uh, we're not hiding anything from anybody uh if you want to check us out on youtube we'd love to see you there as well so um that was my comparison for epoxy floors and kitchen cabinets uh Let's move on from there. Next, we're going to talk about um, Benjamin Moore Dry Erase. But first. Hey, everybody. This is Atlas Cage, founder of Sky Titan Media and musician in the bands Strings of Atlas and Chords of Eve. And you are listening to the Amato podcast. So turn it up. Unless you're like watching on YouTube. In which case, you just want to adjust the sharpness on your TV until this beard looks nice and crisp. Just, uh, yeah. That's, that's what you want to do. That's probably the only singer I know that's also a professional wrestler, <laughs> a gamer. I'm trying to remember what else he told me. He's just a, he was a cool guy. Uh, we have a lot of guests that who have just confirmed today over the next couple of weeks. We've kind of been um, not slipping, but we've been focused on the marketing for the painting company. So now we have a little bit of time. You're going to have some guests coming back up some recurring guests coming back up that we've had on before that everybody loved. Um, but let's talk about the product of the week. And these reviews are going to be good. Um, could be bad. Uh, I will tell you that this product was given to me um, for a review and it's Benjamin Moore's notable. 
I will also say that I had not I had not been paid for this review. The review was already up. We did a video uh, unsolicited, and then they had me do some things for them after that. So um, the Benjamin Moore dry erase uh, product, and let me show you the video that we've done. Can you play that video, Preston? Do you want this video or the one that we did? That one. This one? Yep. Yeah, I can play it. Cool. So you saw that that was um, that was a paid promotion. That right there, um, not heavily paid. They can pay more <laughs> if they want to sponsor us. We're also up to uh, welcome to any sponsors. Uh, and you saw Tag was in the video. Tag worked for us for a little while. Tag ended up in um, a, look, a weird spot transition for the company. A great guy. I wish he was still here. But you saw him doing that wall, and he he's not a painter. So here, I have tried every dry erase coating. Um, the issue has always been the it sags. So you'll you'll roll the wall out, and you trust me, I've done it every different way. I've used every different roller nap uh, width. I've put it on light. I've tried to back roll it. You walk away, turn around, and, and it's sagging down the wall very slightly, and it shows up in your finish. It happened all the time um, with many of the products. It, the other products didn't cover for me. Um, recoat times were were way too long for to, to give somebody a proper price. So the prices were always more expensive because we had to return um, a little while down the road to recoat it or the next day. And then um, erasability was a major issue with most of the other ones that I've used. Uh, hard to use, just wouldn't erase. They would ghost. So when I say ghost, I mean uh, you'll you'll write, you'll erase like a chalkboard. And then you kind of still see what you wrote behind it. And uh, what happened was I was at the local paint store, Glico Paints here in Easton. And um, I was complaining about the dry erase coatings. I had something coming up. I think it was in our office. And they said, here, try try this one. I said, all right. I said, I haven't had any luck with any others. I'll give it a try, though. So um, brought it with me, mixed it up. Very easy to mix up. Didn't smell bad. Um, I like that it was a one coat product. I say one coat, so you you would roll it on and then immediately roll it again. So two coats, I guess, but there was no weight. So the only trouble I have is I'm very impatient and I want to write on that thing before the allotted time. I forget. I think it was seven days. You have to let it cure. I could be totally wrong. But um, so, you know, in the fourth ish day, I'm standing there looking at the wall by myself. Nobody else is there. I think it was Saturday. And I thought, ah, I'm going to write on this wall. So lesson learned, follow the instructions when you're using any of these coatings. Because when I wrote on it, you just could not erase it because I wrote on it before it was cured. So I had to use it. I used the chemical to get it off. And then it was fine once it cured. Uh, and the one you just saw in the video, that was at a local school district where we used it in, the, uh, in one of their classrooms. 
Um, so, I mean, it can be used in almost any, any place that you work, hospitals, um, playrooms. It's not, it's not so expensive that it can't be used. We used it throughout our offices in our other office. Uh, it's definitely something that, that we do, we can do. Um, it's possible that you could do it. It's not, it's not out of the ordinary for a, for a homeowner to do it. Price is not inexpensive, but uh, I, I think cheaper than buying a whiteboard and a little more versatile because you can buy it in a clear. So what that means is I could use it in my room right here over a color, put a clear on it, but my background is gray or pink or whatever color you like, yellow. And that's why I like a clear. So um, do you have something else up there? Well, this is just an example of how you put it over the red wall. Oh, here. Here you go. If you can this see that. On top of the red wall. What? Go ahead. You can play it. Okay. Hey, guys. Okay, we're back here with the bedroom and more notable dry erase coating. It's been a few weeks. Um, actually, I wanted to wait even longer than I told you I was going to. So it's been about three weeks now since we put it on. Typically, you're supposed to wait seven days for a full, full cure. I waited three weeks, and the reason I waited three weeks is even though the other company's products are raced in the beginning, I'm talking the first week or two, after that it was a very heavily, a very heavy drop uh, in erasability, um, and really the last one I used, I had to use a solvent xylene to get off the, the writing, and I'm sure that's not what the manufacturer intended. So here we are, dry erase coating, what do I like about this? It's very shiny, as you can probably see. Um, I like that. It shows me that it's probably going to erase very well. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard coating. And by hard, you can feel it's harder. Um, it was easy to put on. That was the best thing for me. We could, we could mix it easily. Uh, it takes two coats. And it's a wet on wet coating, which I love. I didn't have to put a coat on and wait three, four hours with another coat on or a whole other day. Put one coat on, I think I waited a minute or two, whatever the specifications were, and I rolled it right again. It was great. I had no sags on this board like I would have with other coatings. And sags, I mean, the coating's a little happier, so you'll start to see little. You guys get the idea. So you can put it over any color. Um, I, I really like that product. That's the product I would go to. Uh, and, and, you know, I've tried the other company, Sherwin-Williams, and we use a lot of Sherwin-Williams products, so it's just not one that I would choose to use from them. Um, and that's my, that's my, my pretty much straight truth on the Benjamin more notable. We're going to be doing some Sherwin Williams products coming up over the next few weeks. If any other companies want to, uh, have us review anything, just so you know, it, it will be a true review. So based on my experience, you know, in my hand on a job or on a sample wall. So it could be, it could be different in different scenarios. We know that. Again, if you're looking for any social media content for your contracting business, for your painting business, if you need any help, any ideas. Check us out at Amato Media. So um, the one thing I want to talk about today, and it's probably so I know a lot of general contractors, so um, we're going to see right here. Well, I know a lot of general contractors. We, we talk to them. You used to work for them all the time. My experience is commercial painting. Um, so I've been around. I know how things go. On the, the end of it, as a business owner, a painting contractor, and as I was saying this in the intro, I could see Mike, Michael Crane shaking his head at the bottom. Um, working with general contractors is tough as a painting contractor. Typically, we're the last ones on the project and we have to make everything look good. And maybe we in the, in the beginning, we had a month long um, schedule, a span to do the job, but now because the whole project crept along or slowed down or they had issues, they try to cram in one month of painting work into one week and expect you to send countless amount of painters out regardless of your other projects. And that was never discussed at any point. So. Um, we tried and tried and tried working with contractors and some issues were our issues. Other issues were the contractor's issues. The, the main reason um, we stopped doing work with general contractors, we just couldn't control the schedule. 
So if we're in control of the schedule, it makes things a lot easier for everybody. We know when our guys are coming and how many guys are needed and when they can do the job. But if, if the job is in somebody else's hands and it was supposed to start in July, this is a typical scenario. So a commercial project, it's bid maybe sometimes a year beforehand. So you don't know that when it's coming up, it's tentative. And then you're told that you, you won the job here, sign our contract. Now this is maybe six months before it's supposed to start. And we keep calling, Hey, when's this project starting? When's this project starting? And they give us a date and it never starts on time and it goes slower than it should. And you're supposed to start in, on July 1st. So you'll allot guys and girls for that job. And July 1st comes and now it's July 15th and now it's August 1st and now it's September and you haven't heard a word. You call, nobody calls you back. And now all of a sudden, September 7th, somebody calls you and said, Hey, when are you guys starting? We're starting the job tomorrow and we have three days to finish it. And you need eight guys here to finish the job. You have no material ready. The job's not ready. You have, you're solidly booked out on other projects. And if you don't show up, they'll replace you in two seconds. Guaranteed. So um, you try to show up, maybe you try to send four people instead of eight because you want to you uh, collect the, the money. You won the job, you did the project, you pride yourself in doing that type of work. So you show up with less people than you should have. And there's actually more work than originally thought because they've had a lot of issues along the way. So this whole job that you estimated on a, on a set of blueprints is now totally different when you show up. You're working around multiple other trades at the same time. You could show up in one room and have the electrician, the plumber, the painter, the spackle guy or girl, uh, the carpet people. I've had carpet people trying to put carpet down as we're painting the walls. Um, you could have five, six trades in one room while you're trying to finish this job. And as you're painting walls, they're getting damaged. And then guess who is responsible to fix the walls? The painter. But you're not going to get paid for them because good luck. Try to Try to collect on a general contractor it's really not going to happen if you want to spend money going to court uh, you're going to spend more money collecting less money than you're owed so getting paid has always been an issue we're talking about working with contractors getting paid and this is not every contractor it's just been the majority of the ones that we worked with and again some of these issues could have been our issue and for uh, you know ryan amato painting um the contract is another thing. So every painting contractor, I'm sure, has a contract, has their own contract. We'll throw that out the door because you're not going to, they're not signing your contract. You're going to be signing their contracts. Um, and then their contracts are so ironclad. Again, you're, there's no sense even fighting it. Uh, the quick boot. If you're on a project, now I know this happens because it happened to us and it's been reversed where contractors call us and try to have us come in and do it. Uh, I've actually got a call. It was in January, middle of January. It was a local strip mall. And I, I saw the painters out there painting. They were on lifts. It was snowing outside. I drove by and I'm like, wow, these guys are painting outside and it's snowing. That's, that's crazy. Not two hours later, I got a phone call from that general contractor asking if we could have three guys there tomorrow because they wanted to replace them because they weren't going fast enough. So if you get calls like that, guys, you have to remember that um, just like, you know, if they're going to replace them with you, what's not going to make them replace you with somebody else? Nothing. It's all about getting the job done in, by any means necessary. Bad scheduling. There is very bad scheduling in the contractor world. Um, I, and again, I just explained to you why that happens and then unlimited touch-ups, you'll be responsible for that job until, until they give the key to the owner. You'll be touching that job up until somebody's moving in and trust me, it happens all the time. So I know some people who only work for general contractors and that's cool and they do great. Um, and I can think about five, six, seven people right off the top of my head, um, but that's probably all they do. They're not moving back and forth and they're just working with general contractors. They could be heavily financed where they're, they can, they can handle not getting paid for 30, 16, sometimes 90 days. We pressed and we just had a job, right. That, um, I think paid us a year later. Yep. 
And that was, this, that was where Preston went to school at the sales university. It was a year later. And that's a, I can talk about that now. We got paid and, everything's good. and he doesn't go to school there anymore. So that contractor from the start was, was very difficult to work with. I went up there and they said, why aren't you guys here? You should be painting. I said, show me what's ready. We walked around. This was, this might've been uh, February. We walked around they took me into uh, bathrooms. They built these outdoor bathrooms made of block, cinder block that had no roof on them. And it had two feet of snow on the ground inside and he wanted us to paint them. And when I explained to him that, you know what, you probably shouldn't paint uh, when it's 12 degrees outside snowing and two feet of, of snow in the room that we're going to paint. He just couldn't understand that. So uh, it just started from there and it went, it went uh, downhill from there. Uh, they just uh, didn't have the right person on site uh, managing that project. Um, but we got paid in a year later, believe it or not. Amazingly. Um, but let's move on from there. Hi, folks. Ed Hurd, 86 World Series, New York Mets. And you're watching the Amato Podcast. Hey, baseball. We're almost ready for baseball. I know it's not on our list, but hopefully um, everything still is going smoothly and we end up having some sort of baseball and everybody doesn't freak out about um some positive tests coming through and remember that you're seeing positive tests because people are being tested. Um, I don't know about all the rest of it, but I need to see some baseball. I've been watching, um, I guess the Jap Japanese baseball league. I, I watched rugby the other day, so I watch anything. Uh, okay. Rugby school. Um, let's get into uh, customer questions, Preston. Okay. Hang on a second. There you go. All right. First question is why do you not use Home Depot or Lowe's paints? I'll tell you the, the, the easiest answer to that is, and it's not because it's not good paint at all. Um, because I've bought that paint for my house. Some of their higher end uh, grade of paint is, is good. Even some of the low end grade of paint is good. The, the issue is trying to get the paint out of the store or order the paint in any kind of timely fashion when you're a painting contractor. So, you know, when you go in and you're a homeowner and you go to get a gallon of paint, if there's six other people standing there, you have to wait in line. Um, yeah, I guess you could call ahead, uh, but we've had some issues with colors being the same. You know, if you get, buy some paint on Monday and then you go back on Thursday, some of the colors have been slightly off. Um, it takes too long to get in and out of the store. I just don't feel it's a great idea to show up to somebody's house and say you're a professional painter and show up with um, lower grade products. You know, they're paying for a certain experience and that experience to me is either Benjamin Moore or, or Sherwin Williams. It's not the other painting pro products. And I know as far as, you know, again, epoxies, I keep throwing this at you guys. As far as the epoxies in, in the big box stores, they're not the same epoxies off the shelf that you get off the shelf in Sherman Williams or, or Benjamin Moore and um, nowhere near the epoxies that we use. And we get our epoxies. Um, you can't just walk in the store and get what we're using generally. Uh, so that's the just quick answer there. It's too hard. What else next, you got? Next question is, oh, it's, it's the same thing. We answered it. it was, can you use the kits to do your floor? We kind of already answered that one. I'll answer it again. You, the, okay. reason you, the reason you don't want to use those kits that you see in Home Depot or Lowe's are they're thinner filmed epoxies. They're not the same epoxies. If, if, you, if you're dead set on doing your own floor yourself, um, I get it. It's not something I would, I would take on myself unless I knew how to do it. Um, but you can certainly go spend a little bit more money for a way better product at your local paint store. Next is, we kind of answered this last week, but uh, can you itemize the materials? I wanted to add, readdress this one. So we get this a lot and it's usually because people are trying to price out different contractors and see where everybody is coming in at. Um, we are not making much at all off the paint that we use on your job. So, um, 
I don't know about other contractors, but we're not buying paint at, you know, $15 a gallon and putting it into the job at $30 a gallon because we want to be competitive and we want to give you the best bang for your buck. But the problem of separating the material with the labor, if you, if I put that down on an estimate and it's written and you see it, if we were, were ever audited as a painting company, now that I've, now that I, I separated the materials, I should have charged sales tax on those materials because it's not part of a job anymore. I sold paint. Um, I know it's happened to other people that I know. And I mean, if they, if they audit you after a year of using paint and now all of a sudden you owe 6%, I think it's 6% sales tax on the paint that you used. Um, that's a good chunk. That's on top of what you've already paid in sales tax. That doesn't preclude you from having to pay it again because you paid it at the paint store. You resold the paint. So, uh, we just don't do it. It's part of the job. Um, you know, you go out to a restaurant, they don't itemize the drinks and the, and the, um, the food. Well, actually they do on the, on the menu, but, um, you know, that the pricing is already there. That's a bad example. Um, if you go to the doctor, you're not selecting off a menu for different services and you're not asking for an itemized menu. We want to include everything into our job. That's what you get with us. Go ahead. Preston. Back. Hmm? We're back. Oh, you were there. You didn't leave. Oh, no? No. Oh. What's the next question? Oh, I was gone. <laughs> next question is... Where are we at? Can I put blue tape where I like the touch-ups? Oh, I wish I had a picture of some of the jobs. Sometimes people use so much blue tape, the, the wall looks like it's painted blue. So here's the reason you don't do that. Um, it's passive aggressive is, is number one. We don't want to do that. You want to have a great conversation and communication with the person in charge of your paint job. So on the jobs that I, I sometimes physically go out to, and that's, that looks like that's our next question. Um, you should be talking to whoever you're working for every day or with, uh, you shouldn't have any guesses like on the last day of the job that all of a sudden you show up and there's 30 little lots of blue tape all over the wall. Um, you should have already walked through the job with the customer on the first day and explained what you are fixing and what you're not fixing and what's included and not included. The estimator should have gone over it, hopefully. Um, and then every day you can go over it. You know, I, why didn't you fix this little thing here? Well, you know, you had 50 others in the room and I did the majority of them. I, I just couldn't get, I couldn't do that one. We can't do every little inch of the surface. Um, you don't want to have the painters go home and then and at that night you you break out the flashlight and you start putting blue tape all over the place. When they show up in the morning, trust me, they're not happy. Um, could be mainly because you could have just talked to them. So trying to sneak around at night and putting blue tape all over your walls or your floor or your trim, um, it's not cool. Just talk to, talk to the painters. They're all good guys and girls. They'd love to make you happy and that's why they're there. Um, so it's a little passive aggressive. Let's not do that. Um, one day I'll pull up a picture for you guys. If I could find it of a real customer and, uh, they had to use about three rolls of blue tape in, in a room. Um, it was out of control. What do you got? Next question is, will Ryan be here painting? We don't get asked that too much anymore. I think it's pretty known or it, they make it known that I'm not really like involved in the, in the day to day painting. Uh, we're more of trying to work on uh, the marketing and the informational things. And I let you know everybody else manage the day to day stuff. But there are some projects that I, I go out to. They're, they're more of ones that um, I'm experienced with such as the roof job at St. Luke's that we just did, the, the big building off of 22. Um, my experience is commercial painting again. I know there's some projects next week that I'm going out to do. Um, but to expect me to be at, at, there's no way I could be at every project. There's no way I can answer every question. So we've brought people in to, to handle that effectively and be able to get you the answers that you want quickly. If you need me to give you an answer, uh, your job could be over by the time that I, I get back to you. So we've put people in place for that. Um, but there are some jobs that I would love to be at. I just can't be there, unfortunately. 
What do you got? Next is uh, contractor questions. Okay, or contractor tips. Yep. So Wait. first is why do we say that estimates aren't free? I don't charge for mine. Okay, so this is directed to to um, contractors in general. So when or clients too, when you think that you're giving a free estimate, um, in in wording you are, but not not for real. Because remember, how long does it take you to do an estimate? This is why I get so crazy on our end if somebody calls us and we don't get right back to them or things aren't written down properly. We use a lot of different apps here in the office and it tracks everywhere where the leads come from. It, it tracks conversations, time, the time that it takes to get back to them. And this is the one reason that it drives me crazy because it costs us hundreds of dollars for every estimate to go out and do one because you have to spend the time to do it, drive out to it, do it virtually, however you do it. So what does it take an hour to actually do it? You might have an hour into driving. Um, you're going to have all the follow-ups on it. If you have follow-ups, uh, all your costs, the business to obtain that estimate through marketing, whether it's Facebook ads or Google ads or however you get your estimates, it all goes into a, you know, a pot and that's what it costs you an hour to work. And that's what it's going to cost you to do an estimate. So when you take them for granted and you don't get back to somebody or you don't write their information down correctly or the email's wrong, you've just wasted that much money. And to me, that's very serious. And um, I, I take it very serious. And that's why I think Preston, you saw me going crazy when I first walked in today because I just start going through things. When I see things that aren't done properly, it drives me a little nuts because it, it costs money. So your estimates are surely not free. You know, as a customer, you may think it's free, but you're costing the company money to come out and do it. So that's why Michael talked about pre-qualifying. That's why we try to pre-qualify. And what that means is, you know, Preston needs his kitchen cabinets painted. And Michael's going through a list of questions trying to get a bunch of information to determine if it's if it's the type of job and price range that he is um, accustomed to working in because if not there's no reason wasting anybody's time and it's no offense to that client but i know michael does very high-end work and i know the products if you go onto his youtube page and look at the products he uses they're very high-end products they're not products you're going to be buying right here um and a, a cost comes with that and his experience comes with that. So that's why estimates are not free. Uh, going off that, let's jump on to the, do you pay for leads? Um, yeah, so uh, what happens is when you're a small painting company, you don't have to pay for leads. You can, you can work off a of word of mouth, you can work off of referrals, but when you get to a certain size, you just can't have as many leads as you need to keep the business going for the amount of painters that you have. So you have to, pay for leads. I don't know how you're going to do it. You could be doing it through Facebook, Google, Home Advisor, um, Angie's List, whoever you do it through. Uh, the, but the main important thing there, again, is you have to track where your leads are coming from and if they're converting into sales. Again, is the why you have to write everything down correctly and you have to track your information. If you're going to pay for leads, but you don't track your information, you could be wasting a lot of money. So how do we hire? <laughs> I mean, how does hiring right now is like a, so hiring for a painting company has always been difficult. Um, that right now it's even more difficult. So it's a whole, you know, we have a whole team of people working on it from me to Preston, to um, my daughter, to Tanya to Kyle, to whoever picks up that phone, we need to have people know that we're hiring uh, because you don't want to miss somebody. You want to make sure that you know what's bringing these people to you uh, and you keep them here. And sometimes you're going to ruin relationships. You've messed up. They messed up. Um, you want to try to find out why, what did you do wrong? What did they do wrong and how to correct it? So um, hiring for us is, is, is always hiring. We're always hiring. It should be on everything that we do. It's again, it's relationships. We want to be out at the paint stores. 
wherever the painters are, we want to be there. We want them to know that we're interested in talking to them and that we're looking for a certain type of person to, to work with us. So again, same way everybody else does, you know, specialized ads, um, Facebook, uh, however you can get yourself in front of the people that you want to talk to is what you need to do. It's the same way that you find clients. So how do you choose the paint stores that we work with? Uh, <laughs> we have in our area, and I'm sure it's like this in everywhere else, we have a multitude of Sherwin-Williams stores. We have one, two, three, four Benjamin Moore stores, at least that I know of, maybe five, in one in New Jersey, close to us. Um, we're looking for first good service, and well, they all have good service in our area. I don't think there's one that stands stands apart from from any of the others, um, and that's a good thing. I mean, they all go out of their way to get things done. Um, somebody you can trust, you can trust them knowing where your job is or your potential job, and they're not going to go talk to somebody else and let them know that this job is bidding for painters, and that's happened. So that's, that's another one. So trust, uh, communication. I want to know about new products. I want to have new products in my hand. I want to be able to make videos of them. I want to have some kind of relationship with their marketing department. I'm talking about Benjamin Moore or Sherwood Williams on the, the higher end level. Um, pricing for us, they're all going to be compare, competitive to us. We use a lot of paint, so they're going to do whatever they have to do to earn our business. Um, so pricing is not a major factor on our end. Uh, again, it's communication, ease. Um, whether you like Sharon Williams or not, they have a store everywhere. So, you know, the guys are out, girls are out all over the area here. They can go to any store that they want. So that's about it. Then going off that, Sharon Williams or Benjamin Moore. We've done a couple of videos on this. Yeah, and we're gonna we have to quickly start moving. I just looked down at the time, but Sharon Williams or Benjamin Moore, we're gonna do one whole show on this. It depends on the project you're doing, um, and again, it depends on that service that you're getting. So uh, I'm gonna leave it at that one at that. Okay. Let's go down to the question of the week. All right. How can I get and do a great estimate? So for customers and Contractors, I guess. Customers. Customers. You have to give us actual, factual, and detailed information. You have to want to communicate with us. If we come out to your house, you have to be there. It sounds crazy. You have to be there. Without knowing what you expect on the project, it's impossible for somebody to give you a good job. And you cannot assume that if you get three estimates, that each company is going to do the job the same way. So that uh, communication, be there. And even if you're there, when I say be there, be present. Don't, don't, um, don't be there and then you're on your phone the whole time talking to whoever or you're on your laptop or you just have no time for the painter. Um, painting contractors, you have to ask questions. You have to ask what do they expect this project to look like? Um, because if they tell you something completely different than what you actually give to people, that's an area for uh, missed expectations and trouble. Trust us. Um, again, be, be timely. Be on site when you say you're going to be there. If you're going to give a virtual estimate, do it when you say you're going to do it. Um, and we again, that's a whole nother video in itself. And I'm going to leave that on there to, to catch on another time. We're going to skip over um, epoxy floor pricing. And we did the product review. Uh, we have one question in the comments. Uh, it says, do you know your conversion rate from estimate to close deal? So our closing rate? Our yeah, closing yeah. ratio? Yeah. Who's asking that? I don't see it. It's John Zarita. Yes. Man, it, it, it varies, John, from um, – <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. But I do know that. It varies if we're doing residential. It varies if we're doing commercial. It varies from residential to interior and exterior and from epoxy floor to 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 whatever else we're doing for for interior. I don't like it to creep up 
close to 50%. I, I, at that point, I think we're taking on too much work at a low price. Um, and I don't like it to creep below 35% because then I think we're maybe the jobs aren't priced accordingly. But I, I let we use a program to track it. It tracks it automatically. I don't have to do anything as long as the information is added in again correctly. Um, that's my rant for today. So um, I'm watching it all the time and I'm adjusting as I go. So if, if we're losing too many, I, I got to take a look at the pricing and see what's going on. Or if the leads are coming in that aren't really qualified leads. So we're doing a lot of virtual estimates now, John. Um, so we're getting a lot of people just looking for pricing that maybe aren't our true customers. So our closing rates going down, but it's not the real closing rate. Do you know what I mean? So for instance, I did last week and the week before I probably did, I don't know, 40 plus estimates in the real world in real times. I'm not doing that many estimates, but we're doing virtual estimates. So it's so much easier for everybody to, to contact us and I don't have to go out. They're not really obligated to anything. And you know, a lot of them, you still pre-qualify, you still give them the information, you give them a price and then you never hear from them again. And, um, it counts against your closing rate, but it's not real. It's not like I went out to the site and they saw me and I could present our company and what we do. So yes, I try to stick. I try, I would love to be around 40 ish percent. Um, but the commercial work brings it down just because you're bidding so many jobs and, um, the tire kickers definitely bring it down. But that, thank you for uh, any other questions. Definitely send them along. You can email us questions too. Uh, my email is Brian Amato at yahoo.com. And what's the Amato media one? Amato media at yahoo.com. Yep. So, or just find us everywhere that we're at. Yeah. Message us. But we got an interview or meeting with Mike Cameron. So yep. we got to go. <laughs> cool. Last time. Here's our commercial for Amato painting. We will see you guys uh, maybe again this week. We're going to do some other videos going on. We have uh, a cool new uh, tool coming in, the Roadcaster Pro. Um, I just broke down and bought it, so we're going to try that out. Uh, any questions, send them along. Hopefully talk to you guys soon. Have a great week.